The war of words ramped up this week big time between President Biden and Florida Senator Rick Scott. The senator says the president is unfit to hold office. He has called on Mr. Biden to resign because of his failure to handle issues like inflation. He doesn't like his new Cuba policy. And then there are immigration issues at the southern border. We talked with Senator Scott this week before he headed for New Hampshire, which, as you know, is the first state in the nation to hold presidential primaries. And so we started there with his prospects for 2024. I was telling my team that we were going to talk today and they all wanted to know whether you have made a decision about 24, whether you're going to run for president or not, or what needs to happen to make that happen. I have no, I have no plans to run for president. I'm, I, you know, I'm focused on my job as a U.S. Senator. I've got, um, you know, I've done that. I've got a plan to try to change the direction of the country. So I'm focused on that right now. Okay, fair enough. At least I, I will pass that along to the team. So, um, Senator, I wanted to talk about this week, uh, President Biden unveiled some new moves as to Cuba policy, something critically important to our viewers and so many with such a personal stake. And you have been among the biggest critics of what essentially is a rollback of some of the hardest line items um, and, and what the president has framed these new moves as is not only support for the people of Cuba, but also our own national security when it comes to immigration. So what, what are your criticisms specifically? Well, th this is just pure appeasement of the, uh, the Castro regime. I mean, this doesn't do anything to help the people of Cuba. We've got 1,300 peaceful protesters, some as young as 14 years old, uh, that uh, are in prison. Uh, they're being tortured. Um, people like Jose Daniel Ferre, they're being tortured. They're, you know, they, you know, the Cuban administration wants to kill them. Did they do anything to help any of these individuals? No. And and by the way, this appeasement of the Castro regime has never worked. So uh, the, you know, to, it just well, doesn't to, work. To your point, um, the. The changes leave in place the embargo, which many of the opponents have argued has not worked. Um, you, what you frame as appeasement, I, I want to drill down a little bit in that, because some of the components of these new changes are directed really at the Cuban population. Family reunification, opening up of travel of cities outside Havana, uh, investments, private investments in the Cuban people's private businesses. No, no doubt the Cuban government is hands on and will most certainly by all accounts have some benefit to that. But the the actual components of this Biden plan, much like the Obama plan that he was part of, is really aimed at the people of Cuba. Do you not see any sort of compromise vis-a-vis -vis not black or white hard line or appeasement, but some compromise policy that might assist the Cuban people um, without directly appeasing the Cuban government? Well, I think it's positive that you work to reunify um, families. I think that I think that's actually a positive. But let's look at this. This is going to be more money for the Castro regime. That's all this uh, all that's going to end up happening. It's not going to help the people you take. You know, there's a lady in Miami. I know that she got her hand chopped off, um, stuck in the mud so she would uh, get an infection and die. And this was after um, Obama's appeasement before. And when they oh, you know, this we're going to work together. This is all going to get better. No. And you know what she did wrong? All she did was complain about school being closed. So this is going to be more money for the government, more money for their the, you know, the, the, their police to, you know, and, and think about, did we get anything? Was there anything that says, oh, we're going to, we're going to let these people out of prison. Oh, we're going to have you, we're going to let people visit them. There's nothing, nothing. I mean, so do we got not get anything for the people that believe in democracy there? Nothing. Well, this and by the way, you know, when this, Glenn, this, this, I'll tell you, this makes me mad. So last summer after, after the, uh, the protest, so the, I, I pushed the State Department to say, we've got to get the Internet back on. They said, absolutely. OK, so that's what, 10 months ago, they've done nothing. And now they say, oh, they're going to invest with some entrepreneurs on the Internet. No, they're not. I mean, this is just pure appeasement. By the way, Biden does not care about Latin America and he doesn't care about democracy. He doesn't care about it, whether it's Cuba, whether it's Venezuela, whether it's Colombia, whether it's Nicaragua anywhere he those, doesn't those care. are senator i know those, those are some very harsh words and there is 
you know, there are always two sides to the Cuba question um, that we've been dealing with really and reporting about in my lifetime. But I, I want to just bring it back to the actual announcement this week and the component of this announcement that has to do with what the Biden administration calls national security and the intent or the effort to try to better conditions for people in Cuba so that they don't need to or want to leave. And that comes from some staggering numbers that we've been seeing, um, not only through the Straits, but over the southern border of Cubans coming into the United States. And so I, I would I want to hear your take on this component of immigration and national security and the opportunity to do things in Cuba that, that might better the quality of life for people there so that they do not leave. Well, first off, that's a decision for the Castro regime. They could make the lives of Cuban citizens better. All right. It, do, I, do I believe that we ought to come up with a way that people can legally immigrate from Cuba? Absolutely. This is a decision, though, by the, by the Cuban regime. And by the way, They've never told us exactly how they harmed so many people in our embassy, um, you know, and, and which which caused the problem in the first place. And they've not told us how this is going to get fixed now. Uh, I believe and they've the Cuban never taken responsibility. There's nothing. I believe the Cuban government said that they were not responsible for the. the you're talking about the sonic, the sonic right. um, aud auditory attacks. Well, then who is? I mean, by the way, it's a totalitarian government. They control everything that happens there, okay? And they just oh, so, oh, yeah, so, so yeah, we, we, it wasn't us, so don't worry. I mean, it's like talking to the Chinese who lied to us every day. So, oh, no, that fit and all, well, oh, yeah, we're cracking down on that. No, they're not, just like Cuba does. It. I, everything I wanna, that comes out of the Castro regime's mouth is a lie. I want to uh, let, go back to immigration for a minute uh, and, and bring it up a to sort of a larger issue of border and immigration and Title 42. We, we are talking on Wednesday. Um, as of next week, Title 42, which is the component of the U.S. Code that allows a health emergency to be the reason for uh, deporting migrants without asylum claims, that unless a judge extends that, that is set to end next week on Monday. Um, there are this emergency mode that deport, to deport most migrants has been in effect. I mean, we've seen we've seen it with our own eyes thousands and thousands of people being summarily deported. Um, this is sort of a uh, a component of what the DHS secretary said this week is a, a preparing for a surge at the border when that happens. Um, and I wonder if you would address what the administration is doing right now, surging resources there, according to the DHS secretary Mayorkas. Uh, sending personnel, sending medical support. What are you expecting? Well, I expect my orcas to continue to lie. I mean, this is the guy when he came into office, uh, promised me that he was going to enforce the existing laws of the country. He is not. What, what He's hasn't not he enforced? Our asylum laws. What, I'm sorry, they, they sh Senator. They what, shut what hasn't he hasn't enforced he specifically? specifically? Okay, one, he doesn't. It doesn't enforce the asylum laws. He shut down construction of the wall. Shut down shut down things like we we had paid with your tax dollars we had paid for not the wall we had paid for lights and cameras and roads just shut it all down shut down the electricity right i mean what he all i mean what he does is he he comes and you know all he's doing is processing people faster he's not securing us think about what's happened since he since he took the job we had i think 108,000 people die of drug overdoses we just lost a National Guard member that was trying to save migrants coming across. And guess what they found? The National Guard member died and the migrants were bringing drugs in. You know, we've we, had 45 um, members of Glenn, This it gets worse. We have 45 members of ter the terrorist ter people on the terrorist watch list caught. How many have we not caught? I mean, the border Glenn, go to the border. It's open. It's, a, it's just open. I, I actually, That's what it is right um, now. I've actually been to the border in September. We were there when um, tens of thousands of, of Haitians were coming in. Uh, truthfully, I did not see an open border at that spot at that time. Um, but I, I pulled one of the, actually, uh, they're your numbers, National Republican Senatorial Committee numbers, of which you are the chair. Uh, so I pulled some numbers from April, 234,000 encounters at the border, almost uh, roughly half. Um, of release, half were released, half were removed under Title 42. 
so I, I want to just be clear that the encounters at the border are not a, are illegal. They're not all illegal immigrants. These are oh, people absolutely who can, not. right? Look, they can apply for asylum. If, so yeah, but but Glennon, Glennon, here's the. I want I I'm I'm from an immigration state. I believe in legal immigration. I want people to come and live our dream to come here. But you know what I don't want? I'm sick and tired of hearing stories because I feel so sorry for these moms that lost their kids because they took one drug laced with fentanyl. Right? They shouldn't have bought the they shouldn't have bought the drug online. They sh it shouldn't have bought the whatever it was. They're they're dead now. Okay? We're story after story. And you know what the Biden administration does nothing. Does Senator? absolutely nothing. Glenda, I mean, it's so bad. As, as example, we brought, did you know how many people came from Afghanistan? You know how they picked them? Who was at the airport? They are not enforcing our immigration laws. They are not doing it, period. Senator, I hear you. And um, I'm being told that we have to go. So I just want to let you know how much we value your time always to be with us. And I hope you will again soon. Okay, bye-bye, Glenda. Bye.